In this video, I'd like to talk about another particular type of step function, which we call the ceiling function. And the way we define a ceiling function is that it is the least integer that is greater than or equal to x. And the usual way that this is denoted is using brackets, where now the brackets have a ceiling part. We'll put x on the inside and then close that off. Whereas, remember, with the floor function, the brackets were on the bottom. So they look very similar, but when the brackets are up top, it's the ceiling function, and when the brackets are down below, it's the floor function. So for this video, we want to focus on this ceiling function. And with any function, to really get an understanding of it, you want to make a table. So let's start by just plugging in different x values and determine what their y values would be. So for any type of integer, it's not going to be too exciting, but let's look at 1, 2, and 3. So let's plug in 1. So the y value of this function is the least integer that is greater than or equal to 1. So the integer that is either greater than or equal to 1 is just 1 since 1 is equal to 1 in that case. So for the integers, we're using the equal part of this inequality. When you plug in 2, the y value that is the least integer that is greater than or equal to 2 is 2. And for 3, it's 3. In fact, for any integer we want to plug in, we're just going to get back that integer as our y value. So we can start by plugging in those points and graphing those very quickly. So we have the origin, we have it at 1, 1, at 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and so on. Let me just fill these in. So for integer values, the function is not too exciting. It just essentially lines up. It almost looks linear. But when you start to get to fractional amounts, it becomes a little bit more interesting. So let's say we plug in 1.1 here. So the y value is the least integer that is greater than or equal to 1.1. So there are many integers that are greater than 1.1. In fact, there are an infinite amount. So 2 is greater than 1.1, 3, 4, 5, and so on. But we want the least of those. So the smallest integer that is bigger than this number is 2. In fact, 1 point anything for the most part, like let's say 1.8, the least integer that's bigger than this is also 2. So if we were, let's say, to look at 2.3, the least integer that's bigger than this would be 3. And 2. Point pretty much anything, let's say 2.99, the biggest integer that's bigger than this number is also 3. When we move up to 3. Point something, let's say 3.05, the biggest integer that is greater than this number is now 4. So the way this function works is that whatever number you have, it will effectively round it up to that nearest integer. But if it is an integer, it's just going to remain that integer. So 1 point anything is going to round up to 2, though you have to be careful when you have something like 1.9 repeating. So this is 1 point something, but technically this is equal to 2. So if it's an infinite string of 9s after the decimal, it does equal the integer above that. So and that would be true for 2.9 as well, 2.9 repeating, that's also equal to 3. So that's the only point of contention there, but technically this is not less than 2, this equals 2, and likewise for this one as well. So if we start trying to graph our picture here of this ceiling function, let's look at x values between 1 and 2. So when x is equal to 1, the y value is 1. But when x is 1 point something that is slightly bigger than 1, the y value is going to be 2. So it's not going to include that point there since when x is 1 it is 1 but for anything that is slightly bigger than 1 it has a y value of 2 and then we're just going to get a flat line or a 
horizontal line here going across. And likewise, between 2 and 3, the y values are going to be at 3, except for this point right here when x is actually equal to 2. So for x values that are just slightly bigger than 2, so we use an open circle to represent that, the y values are going to be 3, and they end here. And when x is slightly bigger than 3, the y values essentially get rounded up to 4. But again, it's not including that point, so we use another open circle and then another flat line to represent that all points, not including 3, but going all the way to 4 and including 4, all those x values return a y value of 4. So it looks just like our other step function, our floor function, but compared to that, everything is shifted up one unit. So between 0 and 1, not including 0, the y value is at 1. Between negative 1 and 0, not including negative 1, so we use that open circle, the y value is 0. So remember, whatever value you plug in, it essentially will round it up to that nearest integer unless you plug in an integer, in that case, it will just be equal to that particular integer. So if we fill in the rest of the graph, it's just going to be a bunch of steps. This is essentially an infinite step function. And again, let's say between minus four and minus three, those will all round up to negative three, but not including the endpoint of the interval since negative four will just be equal to negative four here. And if we want, we can even extend it a little bit further. So you can see that, again, this looks like a staircase. Now we wouldn't actually graph these dashed lines, but it does help you complete the picture here that it looks like you're just going up an infinite set of stairs here.